Just kind of like a fresh baby. I don't, I'm, I don't know, guys. I, you're, this is me we're talking about. Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a full face of Flower Beauty. Now, I have had this video on my list of videos to film for a long time. If you did not know, Flower Beauty is actually Drew Barrymore's brand and it is sold at Walmart. So we took a trip to Walmart a couple days ago and I bought almost everything from the line. Everything came to around $88, which for the amount of makeup I have in here is not bad because it is a full face. So let's get into it and try things out and see how we like the full range of the brand. I've personally tried a few things from Flower Beauty that I love. If you did not know, the Flower Beauty sponge is one of my favorite makeup application sponges. Nope, it is my favorite that I've ever used. The only critique I had on it was that because the tip of it is so large the way that it is, it's a little difficult to get underneath your eye. But I had a few of my subscribers hear me say that and said that they came out with a new sponge and this is a lot better. Now it does feel a little different to me. Maybe that's because I've used this one like 500 times, but this one feels a little firmer, but I do think it's just because it's brand new. I think over time, the thing I like about this sponge that I've talked about in the past as I do this exact movement is that it's blimby, all right? It's just like, it's soft, it's really bouncy. It's a different feeling than like your traditional beauty blender or even like the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge, which I also love. It's got a different, just, it feels like so soft and so like bouncy, which is a positive. It's a positive, I really, really enjoy it. So I'm hoping that the more I use this sponge and test it out, the more it becomes like that, but this is very soft as well. I'm so excited to try it. I love the shape of it. Another product that I've tried from Flower Beauty is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. Now, I've only talked about this, I think, once on my channel. First time I ever wore this was last year. I believe it was like in March, and I was in New York City. And I put this foundation on in the evening. I was like, you know what? We're just gonna kind of go out in the evening, and I wanna try it and see what it looks like. Bitch, if it wasn't one of the most beautiful, dewy foundations I've ever seen, I would say this is, of all foundations I've ever worn, the most dewy. This is the most hydrating, the most glowy. If you have the dry skin of life and you wanna look like the wettest bitch of life, light illusion, all right, light illusion. I have the shade here, Nude L3. I didn't rebuy this when I went to Walmart the other day. So yeah, the full face, mm, it would probably be closer to $100 because I already had two of the products. And then I've got a whole bunch of other makeup here. And I'm just, we're just gonna get into it, all right? Let's just go. I am gonna start with my skin today so that we can just kind of move through the face as most people normally do. I usually do my eyes first, but you know what? I don't want to. So I'm gonna start off with the Light Illusion. I've already moisturized my face with a tad bit of the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I didn't wanna go overboard with that today because the Light Illusion is so glowy. I didn't wanna add that much more glow to my face. So I did just use like the, just the, just the, I'm gonna apply it to the back of my hand here. You see the color's not bad. This is pretty, pretty close to what I would choose. Well, because I did choose it. I failed to mention in this video that the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation only comes in 12 shades and it is a very unbalanced shade range. It is pretty abysmal. It's got a lot of like light to maybe going into medium shades and then like a few deep shades. So it's very, very poor in the shade range. They need at least 20 more shades in this and to have it be much more balanced and even over the spectrum instead of what it is, which is pretty embarrassing. And lately I've been applying my foundation with a brush. I don't usually go in with a beauty blender. So I am gonna do half of my face with a brush, half with the sponge. Oh my God, I just love this sponge, you guys. It is so nice. If you've been considering it, definitely pick it up because it is unlike any other beauty sponge I've tried. And you can see the coverage on the Light Illusion is just beautiful. And you see that glow that it has? It gets even glowier the longer you wear it. If you are very, very oily, I would probably forego this foundation because you might just hate it. Cause it, I, when, I'm telling you, bitch looks wet. <laughs> It just feels so soft on the skin with this sponge. I can't even tell you, man. But this foundation, it just, I don't know about the wear because when I wore it in New York that day, I wore it in the evening and like I said, I was like 
dewy, greasy, wet looking lady. And I love that look. I love that real dewy, 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 dewy. Some people really don't, but I don't know how it wears because I only wore it for maybe like four hours. And it did seem like it was kind of starting to get even shinier and break down a little bit. You may want to set this. I've never set this with a powder because again, I don't really set my skin all that often. Lately, I've been doing it a little more. So I will, I think, try it in certain areas of my face today. That is the level of coverage that you get with Light Illusion off of the bat with a sponge. And I bet you the coverage is even better with a brush. Gorge, 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 gorge. Oh, it looks like Flower Beauty is also available at Ulta, which is really good to know. They are a cruelty-free brand, obviously. I just want you guys to know that at times, because I am new to the whole cruelty-free scene, I may make a mistake here and there. Like I've been using the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder lately, and I, I Googled it and I saw that it, they were cruelty free. And then one of my subscribers was like, no, they're not. And I was like, what? When you Google it, it will say that they are. But then if you actually click on the link, it's like, never mind. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, cool. Good, 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 cool to know. This side with a brush, let's see the difference. Oh, you know, I had somebody ask me about L'Oreal Pro Glow. And unfortunately L'Oreal, I I'm, I can't use them anymore. I love L'Oreal so much, but you know, unfortunately just gotta do what you gotta do. I think that this light illusion could be a really good dupe for Pro Glow. It's glowier, I think, but it's still got a very, very similar level of coverage and shine to it. So I think if you love Pro Glow, but you wanna find a dupe for it, I honestly think Light Illusion is very, very, very close. All right, so let me look up close and see which side I prefer. You know, they actually look very similar. I don't think that, I think the brush maybe has a, yeah, has a little bit better coverage on the brush side, but Still, they both look great. Love it. I would say that this is like a medium to high medium coverage. I wouldn't call it full. You can still see like some redness and imperfections coming through, but almost just like in the most lovely way. You can see just how shiny it is. Even if I hadn't used the Tatcha underneath, but just still be shiny. Okay, so this is the product I'm the most excited to try. I've heard nothing but good things about this concealer. This is Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer, and it says weightless veal crease proof. I've heard nothing but good things about this concealer. I am excited to try it. I got the shade L3-4 Light. Can I just say something? This is gonna sound really weird and tooty my own horny, but I, I really don't care because I just have to admit it. Drew Barrymore follows me on Instagram. I don't know how, because I think she followed a whole bunch of influencers after she launched Flower Beauty. And when she followed me on Instagram. I just need to make it very clear. I literally shat myself. Not literally, but figuratively shat myself. And I screenshotted it and posted it everywhere because I was so excited I could die. Drew Barrymore, Drew Barrymore, um, Drew Barrymore. Raw beauty crazy. Um, okay, just wanna make that clear. Drew Barrymore. 51st Dates Drew Barrymore, that's my favorite one. Of all Drew Barrymore movies, 51st Dates is the one, right? Tell me, come on. If, if it's not yours, you haven't seen it. <laughs> All right, so this is the packaging here. Love it so much. I think it's so cute. And I love the long doe foot applicator. Ooh, I feel like I did choose the right shade on this one. Definitely both have more of a golden undertone on these. Lately, I've been kind of gearing more neutral, but you know, screw it. So I'm gonna start off with this sponge. And again, this is the Flower Beauty Precision Blending Sponge. And if you look at the sponge, it has the pointed edge right here, but it also has the flat edge. You can get right up underneath there. So I'm going to try both. Very hydrating concealer. Do you see that? I'm gonna zoom you in. That is very, very hydrating. I mean, it does not at all look dry. If you have very dry under eyes, you may like this. The coverage is pretty good. Again, I would call it about a medium coverage. It's not super full coverage. You can still see some color coming through. So if you have really dark under eyes or you need more level of coverage, this could be a good mixer concealer as well. If you have one that's just maybe too dry and full coverage and you want something a little more hydrating. I like this level of coverage because again, I don't like to look like I'm wearing like such a mask. I'm gonna do a little spot concealing like around here down here where I pick the shit out of my face. I'm a picker, all right? I'm a picker. Raw picker Christy. <laughs> Plus I just kind of want to try the, the other edge. <laughs> all right, let's try here. Ooh, I do feel like that layered pretty decently right there to give me a nice added coverage without it looking cakey. Let's flip it around and try here. 
So the sponge doesn't feel like too firm or anything, but it's definitely not as soft as the other. But I think I'm gonna keep using it and I bet you it'll soften up over time. I just have a feeling. I am gonna also take just like a teensy bit of that on my nose because my nose isn't looking that great right now. All right, so that's where we are at. Pretty happy with that. Gonna run down my neck a little bit. It looks pretty good. Everything from this line is just so, so hydrating. I think I'm gonna set my under eyes real quick. I don't know. I think I do wanna set them just a teensy little bit. Just, I mean, I'm talking like, that is it. Just to take that shine down a little bit. So I think I'm gonna work on the rest of my face before I move on to my eyes. I did it the other day and it just made the look come together so much easier, I feel. I don't know. Yes, I got a brow pencil. Okay, so this is the Flower Beauty Eyebrow Pencil and Draw the Line. I got the shade Brunette. I do not know if this is the right shade for me. Uh, I just hope it's not too red. I just hope it's not too red. Sometimes brunette pencils, you're like kind of walking the line of too warm. And I have very cool toned hair. If you could get out of the packaging, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much, Preesh. So it looks like on one side comes the spoolie here, and then this is what it looks like on the other side. Let's see. That's not too warm. I feel like that's a relatively neutral, almost looks more green than it does anything, but like in a, maybe a positive way. So let's see, this is kind of a larger pencil. Oh, you know what? That is gliding on real easy. Sometimes with brow pencils, I like them to almost be a little less glidey and a little more stiff because it's less likely that you're going to overdo it on the color. You know what I mean? Like on the application. See, I'm barely even touching my brows and while it is, definitely working. I feel like it may kind of slide around a little bit because it is so emollient. I am grazing my skin. I'm just like literally barely, barely, barely grazing. All right, well, I feel like that brow looks good, but man, if you go in with a heavy hand, you could have some straight up Sharpie brows. I mean, easy because it's so, so glidey. Just look at this. Just I'm barely even tapping. So this product costs $6.98, that is really reasonable. Really reasonable. The prices on Flower Beauty are so reasonable. And I love that you can get it at Walmart. It's accessible for the average person because not a lot of people live near like an Ulta or Sephora or even want to order offline. Some people just want to walk into a store and buy something. And I know that before I started YouTube, that was me. If I, I wasn't going to buy it offline. I mean, I wasn't really, I was a makeup enthusiast, but at the end of the day, I just wanted to have the makeup. And so a lot of times I needed to like go see it in person and touch it and feel it and see like how it's almost going a little rogue here on me. Yeah, cause once it starts to get a little dull like it is now, I feel like it's just almost a little large to work with. Most pencils, I'll show you what I, what I prefer when it comes to brows is like this size. So this is the brow pencil I always use. This is the CoverGirl pencil that I always use. And then this is the Flower Beauty. So you can just see the size difference right there. It's quite a bit different. I prefer this size for sure. And CoverGirl is also a cruelty-free drugstore. I love that pencil. It's the ultra fine brow pencil and I use the color Rich Brown. It sounds like it would be red because it's rich brown, but it really doesn't pull red. And it's also a little bit of a drier formula in a good way. Okay, I feel like I'm getting a little, <laughs> going a little overboard with my brows. Uh-oh. Oh shit. See, and that's another negative is that it comes with two little caps. And so when I put the cap on, I put the wrong size one on and I smash the end of it down because the caps look very similar. One's just shorter. See, so the longer cap goes on that side, the shorter one goes on the spoolie. Darn it. I used the concealer on my lids and it's definitely creasing. So that is one thing to keep in mind as far as underneath your eyes. All right, so brow pencil, uh, I'm gonna give it, uh, I'm gonna say it's not my favorite. It's not bad by any means, but I think I would prefer the CoverGirl one for sure. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with this, which is the Flower Beauty Lift and Sculpt Contouring Palette. I got the shade light to medium and then they had like a medium to deep. This is $12.98 and it comes with obviously your bronzer, contour, blush, and highlight. So that's kind of cool. Really pretty colors. I feel like they're kind of like your everyday shades. This is the Eco Tools Precision Highlight Brush. I'm gonna use it for probably everything. So I'm gonna dip into this shade here. I didn't set my face at all with uh, powder over here. So I do feel like this 
bronzery contour shade. This can happen to me. It doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with flower beauty. It has everything to do with the undertone. Sometimes when they have an undertone that's a bit more cool on me, it almost looks like I'm using blush. It pulls very pink. So like this is kind of the shade that I tend to gear towards loving. This is Shady Biz from Fenty. And then this is the Flower Beauty one. You see how it's just a lot more cool toned? It's not as bronzery. Now I think this is supposed to be a contour shade, but again, when I start going for more contour and less of that bronzer shade, it start, it just, doesn't it kind of look like I just put a bunch of blush on? So this isn't a shade that I personally would go for. I feel, I feel like most people are gearing away from contouring as much and really just going into like bronzing. I feel like bronzing is a lot more popular now than contour. I think because contour can just, it's more difficult. It can start looking really muddy. It can start looking, I don't know, kind of unnatural and like too makeup y. That's why I geared away from it because I wanna just look more sun-kissed and like glowy and healthy than I do like chiseled. <laughs> I don't wanna look chiseled. You can't chisel round anyway. Like you can, you can try to chisel round, but when I chisel, it turns to the side and it's just like lines all over my face. It just doesn't look good. I just had to come to terms with my roundness and that is that. So I do feel like that shade for contour is not good for me. It's not a bad shade. Again, it's just all contour shades. I used to use the Kat Von D shade in light palette and it would do this to me so bad. The contour shade in there that everyone loved, I, it would literally look like I was contouring with straight blush. I don't know why it happens. It's just gotta be the undertones mixing with mine. Right now I just feel like I have pink all over my face. So that's fun. So let's put more pink on by going in with this blush shade. That's a really pretty color. I tend to gear more towards like pinky peachy shades. I feel like the deep palette that I saw at Walmart had more of a peach tone. And to be frank, it was called a deep palette, but it certainly could have worked on me, which means that it's not. Um, I think that it was just a tad bit darker, but it wasn't anything remarkable. But I think I prefer the blush shade that was in the other palette, so. But that is really pretty. It's just like a soft flush of pink. Now I'm gonna use the same brush and actually go with the highlight. The reason I use this for everything is because I want to, okay? <laughs> I don't wanna hear anything about it. It's actually really beautiful. The other day I took this brush and I really buffed on my highlight and this is called the Precision Highlight Brush. I just feel like it works for everything, okay? Ooh, that is way more pigmented than I thought it was going to be. But you know what? Camera is not doing it justice and I'll tell you why. Because there's like no glitter in this at all, like none. This looks just like, almost like it's glowing from within, look. Oh yeah, what a subtle glow. It doesn't look super subtle on camera, but in person, it's pretty subtle, but in a really pretty way. It looks a little light on me, if I'm being honest. I feel like it lightens up my cheeks in almost like a gray way, where I feel like if I had gone to the deeper palette, it would have been better because that shade looked a little more golden. But again, that means it's not suitable for deep skin tones, so we have to keep that in mind. There definitely needs to be a minimum of four of these, I think, to suit, not a everybody, but to be a much more wide spectrum. But if you're very fair, you may really like this palette. Look how pretty. It's not overkill. It's not making me look like I'm too harsh with makeup. I feel like it was definitely created with very fair skin people in mind, but it's very soft and kind of ethereal. All right, for eyeshadow, this is what I picked up. This is the Sun's Blazing palette. And then it says here, a bonus $6 brush. I'll try this brush out. I'm not a huge fan of the brushes that come with palettes. I just feel like they underperform usually. This eyeshadow palette is $14.98, so not super cheap, but not terrible, not terrible. These are the shades. It's actually really pretty for the drugstore. I feel like it's really nice. I'm just gonna try to use the brush that came with it, which is what probably most people are gonna do. So I'm gonna start off with this shade, I think, right here. Oh. There's more initial pigment in that than I expected with how light it looks in the palette. I don't wanna go super orange today, although there is this shade in there and that is really beautiful. I think I'm gonna go in with this guy today. I am going to an open house today and so I don't wanna look like too, you know, too overdone. 
Oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, this palette has some pigment. Let me tell you that much. Look at that. And this is just with the brush that came in the palette. You know, I actually feel like it's a pretty quality little brush. I have very dry skin over here on the corner of my eyes. So just try to, try to look past it. Well, I'll be. Well, I'll be. I feel like most drugstore eyeshadows really underperform. They usually like look really beautiful in the palette and then you put them on your eyes and you're like, these so far are really not doing that to me at all. I feel like this is meeting my expectations. I'm blending really nicely, given that I'm just using the little brush that came with it. Just trying to do this as honestly as possible to what most people might you know, actually do. You know, I think while I'm here, I'm gonna use the same little brush and run it underneath my eyes. This shade almost looks in the pan, like it's gonna be more pinky toned, but then you put it on the eyes and it's pulling really warm. Can't even imagine how warm that other one will pull. Oh, ah, damn, ah, damn. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade here on the very end and just deepen up that outer crease. Just a, just, just a tease. to kind of just press it on right there, kind of pat it in. Sometimes with blending, patting motions are better than, you know, circular. It's like you can get more pigment in that way. I, I will do a little cut. I will do a little cut. I haven't been doing cut creases all that much on my channel. I've been trying to not do as many cut creases in the last few months, but sometimes I just feel like an eye look can really benefit from just a little bit more structure in the front. Like I did with my burger palette eyeshadow look, which if you haven't seen that, I will link it up there. I do feel like sometimes that can really help. So I'm going to just take a bit of concealer and I'm gonna be using it on my Sigma concealer brush, the F70. And I'm just going to kind of give a little bit of structure to this front. Just like that, easy. All right, easy, easy, easy. So now I think I'm gonna take this shade from the palette, which is just calling to me, it's so beautiful. And I think I'm gonna take it on my finger at first, just to kind of see. Ooh, ooh. This palette is not disappointing, it is not. I'm just putting that on the center of my lid right here, and then I'm gonna blend a bit of a lighter shade into the front so that there's that gradient. And I think I'm gonna take that part on my brush and I'm gonna use this shade right here from the palette. Okay, I feel like that shade is very similar to the other, just not glittery, just a little more like a soft shimmer. I feel like it maybe could have benefited from going a little more light, but you know, that's just me being picky. Maybe I'll toss a little bit of that gold shade over the top. Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty. Let me just toss a quick pair of lashes on. I think I'm just gonna do like a small, more natural-esque pair so that it's not like too much. I'll probably honestly use these. These are like the Kiss um, something. They're like wispy somethings. And I will be right back. Okay, so I threw the lashes on. I like them, they're pretty natural, really easy to apply. And then I'm gonna try the eyeliner. This is the Flower Beauty long wear eyeliner, and this is in the shade Brownstone. Tip is very similar to the brow pencil. Let's give this a go and see what the pigment is like on this sucker. Oh, really nice. Again, just like the brow pencil, super emollient. It just glides on like it's coconut oil, all right? It just glides on, just like melting into the skin. I like that a lot, a lot. That is $6.98. All right, so I'm just gonna throw my mascara on the lower lashes. I use the Too Faced Better Than Sex. I didn't get the Flower Beauty mascara. I struggle with mascaras and caring, really. I don't ever wear no lashes. So for me, all mascaras look very similar on me. It doesn't matter how good they are. It doesn't matter anything. It just, they all look like equally as underwhelming. And it has nothing to do with the brand. It has everything to do with my lashes. 
for some reason my lashes are just underwhelming, all right? I did get a setting spray. We will use that at the very end, but I am gonna go in with the lips now. So I got two different lipsticks and uh, I didn't see that they had any glosses. Maybe I was just missing it, but I didn't see that they had any. So I got two different lipsticks. I got the shade Bare Pout Cream. It's a pretty nude. And then I'm trying to find a Wet n Wild Mocha Licious dupe, all right? I'm trying to find a Mocha Licious dupe. Wet n Wild's having some issues right now. Before I feel comfortable promoting them, I need to do more research, but this looks like it could be a nice dupe. This is the shade Pink Dust. I'm going to try to do a lip. Oh, that's very pink. That's not really a nude I would reach for. It's very, very um, light. Let's try and see. That could be a decent Mocalicious dupe. It's a very rare day that I hate the formula of a lipstick. Formula-wise, they're comfortable, they are creamy. I think I prefer Mocalicious to that color, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. If you're wondering, the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks are coming in the mail. Apparently I'm on the PR list. I did not know that as I'm filming this. Jaclyn told me yesterday that I'm on the PR list and I also purchased them, you know? So grateful to be on the PR list. There may be a giveaway or something coming, I don't know. If I've got 40 lipsticks, I don't need that many. Lips, I feel like are a little pink for this eye look. I might end up taking this off before I head out because I just feel like it doesn't go with this eye look. Had I gone for a more pink eye look, I would feel like it's perfect, but. All right, and this is the Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Hydrating Setting Spray. I'm gonna see what this spray is like on this. Oh, that's a fine mist, baby. Mmm, I like that scent. Ooh, I like that scent very much. All right, let's see. I watched a fan flipping tutorial and I learned how to do it. And now where's my fan? Hello? Okay. <laughs> I learned how to flip a fan. It's not that hard. You just have to hold it the right way. There we go. <laughs> it's not that hard. What? Let's do a little bit more setting spray because I waited a little long. Hydrating setting spray. Locks in makeup and hydrates, protects from pollution particles, moisture boosting. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> All right, my friends, and this is the finished makeup look. I'm gonna give you my rundown on everything that I used and let you know what I think about each individual product in a brief, concise fashion. So the foundation, I feel like it is a beautiful foundation. Keep in mind, like I said many a time, it is very dewy. So if you really hate looking almost greasy in a way, like you can see that as the day goes on, like if this is how it looks after a half hour of wearing it, how must it look after a few hours of wearing it. It's not bad, I love it. I love that level of dew, but it does have about a medium-ish coverage. If you really want super full coverage, I would probably go with something different, but I do think this is a really healthy looking foundation. Your skin's gonna look really hydrated and really fresh. I feel like the concealer is really lovely. It is very hydrating as well. It kind of perfectly complements the foundation. I would say, again, it's also about a medium coverage. So if you like a fuller coverage, you may want to forego that. Or like I said before, you have something that's just too matte, just too full coverage, and you want to tone it down a little bit. That could be a beautiful mixing concealer. It's lovely though, really lovely. Eyeshadows, super impressed. I think that they are really, really highly pigmented. $14 for the eyeshadow palette, I think is a little expensive. The brush that comes with it is quite nice actually. That's all I used for my eyeshadow today other than my cut, crease cutting brush. But if you're looking for a decent little kit to give somebody maybe a starter kit and to begin with, or if you're just looking for a, a nice, decent eyeshadow palette from the drugstore and you want something really warm, look no further. This is very, very warm toned because even though I use this shade, which doesn't look super warm, I mean, look at my eyes. This kit right here, I, I don't know how I feel about it in full. I feel like off my first impression, I feel like the shade in here would be better suited as a bronzer instead of a contour, but I feel like I understand why they did it this way. I do think this is suited for very, very fair skin and that's kind of it. It does look nice, it doesn't look bad, I don't hate it or anything, but I just feel like, I think it's a decent kit. And again, especially for somebody maybe beginning in makeup or you're just trying to look for something that's kind of all in one, inexpensive. I don't feel like it's bad if you like the way the colors look, but I personally would prefer a bronzer versus a contour, but that's just me talking. It, lipsticks, I like the quality of them. I have no complaints when it comes to the quality of the lipsticks. I don't love the bare pout one that I used, just given that it's just a very pink. I 
do like it. I just don't like it with this look. I do like a good pinky toned lipstick like that though. It's really beautiful. I just think that it's not my absolute number one. But I think if I were doing a softer, like pink ethereal look, I think that the lipsticks that I picked and the base palette that I used would be really pretty with that. I just think I went a little too warm on the eyeshadow for that kind of look for me. The brow pencil, I would probably myself skip it just for the reasons that I said before, like the fact that it's just a really thick pencil in and of itself and it's very creamy. Although I do feel like the finished brows look really nice. So if you're looking for an inexpensive brow pencil, you can certainly give it a try if you like one that's creamy like that. But if you want one that I personally prefer more, again, like I said, the CoverGirl brow pencil, I think is just a little bit better and more user-friendly. The eyeliner I love, and that may become one of my favorite new eyeliners. It is so glidey, so emollient, depending on how it wears throughout the day. I really love the dark brown shade instead of going with just a really stark black. I feel like it can be a little more wearable throughout your everyday. And then the setting spray, it's hard for me to tell. I don't know if it's actually going to keep my makeup on longer throughout the day, but the mister on it is really fine. The smell is really beautiful, but not super overbearing. I feel like the smell of it is sort of, let me see. Fresh, airy, it kind of smells like a baby in a way, but not in like a gross, like baby powdery way. Just kind of like a fresh baby. I don't, I don't know guys. I this is me we're talking about. The sponges, absolutely. You should definitely pick up the Flower Beauty sponge, the original, this shape, love it so much. This one, I did feel like it was a nice shape. Again, like I said, I hope it does soften up over time, but I do feel like they are the same material. It's just that I've used this one 8 million times, so it's just a little bit more floppy, but you know, we got a floppiness in this sponge too, you know? It does, it does smack us in the face real good. All in all, I feel like Flower Beauty is a really beautiful brand. It's so nice to be able to have cruelty-free options at the drugstore. The fact that you can get it at Ulta and at Walmart, it's accessible for a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people do their shopping at Walmart and a lot of people, the majority of people buy their makeup from the grocery store. I think that a lot of us, because we are makeup enthusiasts, end up going to like Ulta or Sephora or things like that. But most people that I know in my life, they're like, where can I buy a nice cover up from the grocery store? And you're like, I remember those days. <laughs> I remember those days. I miss those days, I really do. I feel like I've gotten too into makeup to where I'm like, oh, dose of color, this and that. People are like, where do you buy that? Can I get it at Walgreens? And you're like, nope. <laughs> And I feel like that's the thing is that I'm trying to think about when I started makeup, how I thought about it. And I was not going to Ulta. I had never even been to Ulta until like two years ago. I had, same for Sephora. Like I feel like I did my first Sephora shopping like four years ago. And when I walked in there, I remember when I walked into Sephora, I sent my friend a message and I said, bitch, I will never buy this makeup. It is too expensive. And she said, ha ha. Message me back in like four years and you're gonna have everything from Sephora. And I look around me, I'm like, I basically live in a Sephora with the amount of makeup I have. But I remember walking in there and seeing the prices and I was like, oh, pretty lipstick, $56? And I still feel that way. Makeup is so ridiculously expensive, it's insane. And that's why when I go to somewhere like Walmart and I see these prices, I'm like, okay, $6. This is what I'm talking about. This is affordable makeup. The makeup that I recommend a lot of the time, I've gotten so convoluted in my mind. Well, the more you do this and the more makeup you try and the more pricing you see, $25 for an item becomes average. But when I started doing makeup, that was not average. That was ridiculous. And even still, that's why I think that things are inexpensive when they're under the $10 price line. I don't think it's expensive. I don't think it's too much necessarily for makeup, like 34, for, it's when things start getting in like the 60s and 70s. I'm like, are you, are you kidding me right now? I think that like, you can definitely get, like there are nice eyeshadow palettes that I think are definitely worth like $35. And I feel like that's, that's a reasonable price. But when we start getting it at drugstore pricing in that way, I'm like, okay, come on here. Like we're talking about eyeshadow palettes at the drugstore store being like $25. I'm like, whoa. I remember when things were like eight bucks max, eight bucks max. And like when e.l.f. was a dollar per item, I remember being like, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, a dollar. That's the kind of makeup I need. So I feel like Flower kept it in a really reasonable price range and it's high quality makeup. Makeup has really changed. It's gotten so much better over the years. And I feel like this is really nice. I feel like this is definitely a suitable face of makeup, especially for somebody who doesn't try a lot of makeup. You may really like this stuff. Definitely go give it a try. I think the main downfall that I find from shopping 
at stores like Walmart or Walgreens or Rite Aid is that they don't have testers. And that's what I like about Sephora. And when I went in there for the first time, I was like, oh, that's something that I feel like all stores definitely need is to have testers. I understand why drugstores don't do it, but it would be really helpful. Some do have it, but most, at least the ones near me, they don't. So if you don't know if it's gonna work for you, you can't like rub it on your hand. You can't like test it and you know, so that is one thing I'm kind of like iffy with, but if this is sold at Ulta, Ulta does. So that's really great. That's all I have to say about this. I think that most of it's really good. I'd say I'd give my face of makeup like a seven and a half out of 10. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. I feel totally comfortable going out like this. I do feel like my nose, especially when the lights turn down, is starting to sort of look not as good. It's almost like makeup is rubbing off of it. And maybe that is because it's just too dewy. That's it. I hope you guys like this video. Let me know if there's any other full face brands you guys want me to try. I'm more than happy to do so. All right. Well, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. And another product that I have tried from cat hair thing. Ah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to Smells like, can you go away? This is not a highway. Thank you. Jeez. So I'm just gonna. Definitely both have more of a golden undertone on these and lately I've been kind of gearing more new, more nerner. That is gliding on real easy. Sometimes I'll, <laughs> I'm gonna zoom you. So let's put more pink on. That's a pretty color. I tend to gear. Oh my God, there is cat hair all over my face. So I'm just going to try to use the little brush that came with it. So, 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 I feel like most drug store, drug store. I feel like most drugstore eyeshadows usually, God, can I spin? Formula wise, I feel like they're very comfortable. Comfortable? Comfortable. It's not that hard. It's a cat hair. Please absolutely fuck off.